Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so if you have not already done so, then watch example zero on partial derivatives because as with all of my other example zeros, we look at the big picture. So we answer questions like, what are partial derivatives? Where do they come from? And things like that, yeah? Okay, cool. So one of the things that we did there in example zero is we came up with the formal limit definition of a partial derivative. And so in this video, in example one, I'm going to show you how to use that formal limit definition of the partial derivative. In particular, consider the function f of x comma y is equal to x squared y. Then in example zero, we said that the partial with respect to x, abbreviated like that, is equal to, it's equal to the limit as h goes to zero of um, f of um, x plus h. Ah, this color coding business, man. <laughs> okay. Ah, I don't like my h either. Um, comma. <laughs> this is the only time I'll color code. Comma y. And then minus. And this is supposed to be black. Jesus Christ, you see? You see why no one wants to color code? Life is just simpler without color coding. <laughs> um, f of x comma y. Ooh. Sorry. My sleeves like showed. Um, and then you'll know who I am. And I don't want that to happen. It's like, yeah. O over h, right? This is the uh, limit definition that we came up with, right? Okay, one second. Let me fix my collar. Like, why is it that when people say one second, it never takes one second? It's always like five seconds. By that logic, no. Like a year is five years. Some stuff, ooh, now I wrote on myself. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's um, use this, right? Okay, okay, on this, right? Okay, so again, I'm sorry, but no color coding. So um, fx, according to this limit definition, I'll do this part really fast, is going to be lim is h goes to zero of x plus h squared, right? In place of x, we have x plus h squared, but y stays minus, and then x squared y is f of x comma y, right? All over h, right? Okay, now, so then this is equal to lim as h goes to zero, of this, if we expand that binomial, is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. But all of it is multiplied by y. So I'll do that. Um, x squared y plus 2xhy, right, plus h squared y, right? So I took care of all of that, right? And then minus x squared y, right? And all of that all over h, right? Got it. Okay, now look here. Boom, boom, right? And so then we go equals uh, lim as h goes to zero of um, 2xy plus hy, all of that times h. So I'm saying after canceling these two, I factored out an h in the two terms there and then all over h. And why would I want to factor out an h from this numerator? Clearly, because I want to do this now, right? Which is um, boom, boom, right? So then we go, this is lim as h goes to zero of 2xy plus hy. Now this has got no h, so h going to zero doesn't affect this, but this does have an h, so this goes to zero, so we get as our final answer, 2xy, right? Ah, got it, yeah? Okay, cool. So we see that the partial with respect to x is equal to 2xy. Now, it's a little bit boring, but we could similarly do the partial with respect to y, and maybe in the end I'll reveal a shortcut, and the shortcut is satisfying only if we use the limit definition on y, the partial with respect to y, that is, as well. So let's do that. And of course, the definition changes so that now it's um, f of x comma y plus h. That's all that changes, right? y plus h um, instead of x plus h in here, right? Everything else is 
just as before. So again, we using this function. Uh, now, fy, the partial with respect to y, I'd go lim is h goes to zero of um, f of x comma y plus h is x squared times y plus h minus um, f of x comma y is um, x squared y all over h, right? So this is lim as h goes to zero of x squared y plus x squared h minus x squared y all over h. Yeah? So some conveniences. So as in um, uh, the derivative limit definition for a function of a single variable, uh, when you're doing the algebra part, anything that doesn't have an h should cancel. You saw that happen twice, right? It should, hap it should happen every single time if you're doing it correctly. Yeah, so, 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 so we go. This is lim as h goes to 0 of x squared h over h, which is lim as h goes to 0 of x squared, which is clearly x squared because, well, h going to 0 doesn't affect that. So we see that fy is equal to simply x squared. Ha ah, Do you see what's going on, fellas? You see the shortcut? You don't have to do this every single time. And clearly, I intentionally chose a fairly simple function of two variables. If our function had been very complicated, using the limit definition would not only take a long time, but the algebra might be like too cumbersome at some point, right? So we've got to have a better way. <laughs> and there is. And this is the better way, right? So like, when you're doing the partial with respect to x, all you have to do is pretend that all other variables are constants. So for this function, when I'm looking to find the partial with respect to x, which is you know abbreviated this way, although as I said, there are many ways to denote it, including uh, this other way. But yeah, when I do this, what I have to do is pretend that any other variable that's not x is a constant. So here, x squared and then y, that's not x, so it's a constant. So I pretend like what I'm doing is x squared times, like, say, y is like 3. Then I would say, well, 2 times x times 3, so that's 2xy, right? Like, so from the good old derivative uh, power rule that you learned, the derivative of x squared is clearly 2x. But otherwise, this y is like a constant when you're taking the partial with respect to x. On the other hand, when you're taking the partial with respect to y, the x is like a constant. So like for the partial with respect to y, it's as if this thing is like 3 squared times y. Well, the derivative of 3 squared times y with respect to y is just 3 squared. And that's why you got just x squared. So again, partial with respect to x, treat all other variables as constants. Partial with respect to y, treat all other variables that are not y with respect to, um, sorry, Treat all other variables that are not y as constant. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, like, you know, like, clearly, as far as, like, this little shortcut, uh, what I just showed you is not sufficient. So I'll dedicate uh, a next example. So example two on harder examples of partial derivatives through the shortcut method. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this otherwise, and keep watching. Take care.